Hi everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Super excited that you're here on my channel. I do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs, other types of crafts on a budget, trash to treasure, thrift flips, a little bit of everything. So without further ado, let's get right into the crafting. So here we go with DIY number one. So this is my inspiration photo. This came from the like side collection catalog. I'm gonna be starting out with a bunch of paint sticks, some large popsicle sticks, or I call them tongue depressors. This is a basket from the Dollar Tree. And then I've got my little miter saw there. So I'm gonna figure out about how long I want my paint sticks to be. And I'm really just gonna end up cutting them off just above that handle or below that handle, however you wanna look at it. So I'm going to cut off the area that has that little divot. So then I'm going to take my paint sticks once they are trimmed down and I'm going to use the tongue depressors or the giant popsicle sticks um, to help me secure all of these together. And this is going to become our sign I'm using wood glue as well as some hot glue. So that wood glue gives it that long term bond. And then the hot glue is just going to give it that instant hold so that we can keep working with our project. And I've just got my straight edge there to help me make sure that I keep it all lined up. And then I was just sanding off that edge that I had sawed. Coming in with my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint and going to give it a good coat of paint. I believe I only gave it just one coat for this project. And then once I had it all painted, I came in with my little pointy Dollar Tree tool and I'm just trimming through, if you will, the paint. I'm just kind of scraping it through there where the little, I'm going to call them boards, they're my paint sticks, but where they come together because I want that shiplap kind of look. And then, of course, you all know that I have to finish off my projects, so, so I want to make sure that the back is painted as well. And then I set that aside to dry. I'm going to be coming in and using my black spray paint on the little tray, and then I'll set that aside to dry as well. I did that off camera. I figured you guys didn't need to watch me spray paint something. So now I have this template that I created on my vinyl cutter. I have a silhouette that I use for this, but you can use any type of stencil that you have available to you. You can also do transfers. If you have a printable, you can use that with graphite paper. It does not have to be from a vinyl cutter. So you've got a lot of options in how you do this. You could also hand letter this and it would be perfectly fine and very pretty. So now I'm coming in, once I have my stencil set, I'm coming in again with the Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. This is gonna help me seal in my stencil before I come back in with my black, which is what I'm doing now. And I'm using my little makeup sponges. Y'all know I like using my makeup sponges because I can cut them down to size and I just like the way that they work for me. And then I'm going to peel up my stencil and get all of the vinyl removed. And uh, I think I had used my heat gun to try and help um, speed up the paint drying process. Probably was not a good idea because I think that helped the vinyl adhere a little bit more to my service. So not sure that I recommend that. Um, so now I'm coming in with my Arteza acrylic paint markers and I am going to be drawing myself some little details. I've got holly leaves here and then I'll be coming in in another minute with some of the regular acrylic paints also by Arteza. I do still have a coupon code for you for Arteza. It's in my description box so if that's of interest to you the new coupon code is good through the end of November. So feel free to use that if that's of any interest at all. And this is just a simple design coming in and creating my little holly leaves. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, this time with just two little leaves. So 
So now I have my regular Arteza acrylic paint. This is in lizard green, and I'm just gonna come in and fill in that leaf. So I'm leaving that outline with the darker green and just highlighting the leaves themselves with that lighter green color. And now I'm coming in with my Cardinal Red Arteza paint and I'm gonna make my little berries. I do have a special drawing coming up and it's not calendars. <laughs> so you wanna make sure you stay tuned to find out what I'm giving away with this video and what you need to do to get in on the drawing. In the meantime, I am using my bare wax in dark and I am just going to distress this a little bit, make it look a little bit more antiqued and aged, just like our inspiration picture was. So I'm just using one of my Kleenex hand towels that I like to keep on my craft table for various things. Um, and I'm just using that, um, you know, this reminds me of shoe polish. I don't know why. So I'm just kind of coming in here with the little hand towel and, uh, and going over it where I think it needs a little bit of, uh, of the wax to get it to the way that looks pleasing to my eye. And there you have it. So here is my little basket. It's all spray painted and dry. And I'm gonna come in with my little sign. I'm gonna be securing this with hot glue. So I'm coming in, just putting the hot glue. And I do have parchment paper under here. I have discovered that hot glue does not stick very much to the, as you can just see there, to the parchment paper. So that's been really helpful to me in my crafting when I just need to have something set down on a surface when I'm hot gluing it. And I know that the hot glue is gonna go through. So now I'm just reinforcing with the hot glue on the back of the sign. And I figured that this would also serve to help with whatever surface I end up putting on it on if I lay it down flat. So here's our little tray. Now you could leave it like that, but I decided I was going to come in with this buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to alternate it through the slats or the holes. I don't know what you want to call that, but all the way around the perimeter of my little basket. I just figured it would give it another nice little touch. So trimming that off and then I'm just going to tie a simple bow at the top just like you're tying your shoelaces. At least that's what I started to do. <laughs> you're gonna see in a minute, I wasn't really happy with the way it was looking. So you certainly could leave it that way, but yeah, I was playing with it and playing with it. And I just couldn't get it to the way I wanted it. So I'm like, you know what, let's try something else. So I cut that off. I am going to dovetail my ends there. And that actually just by itself would be super cute as well. But I did decide I wanted to make a little bow. So I used my two ends that I'd cut off, made myself some loops. I got it to the length that I wanted it. I'm just kind of fastening them together here. And then I used another little piece of the ribbon to tie them together in the middle. I'm just going to get those secure. And so it's going to essentially look like the same type of bow in the end, but you just have a little bit more control over what it's doing when you create it this way versus just trying to tie a knot with it or tie it like you tie your shoe. Trimmed off my ends and there it is. What do you think? Leave me a comment. I was really pleased with that. So here we go with DIY number two. Another inspiration picture. These little ornaments I think were so cute. So I am starting with some tags from the Dollar Tree. And for one of them, I am going to be using my Rust-Oleum white chalk paint and just giving it a really not thick coat of paint. Just um, letting some of that black still show through. I did use my vinyl cutter for this and I created um, a couple of decals, if you will. So for the second one, I did do it in a two-tone. And if you've not done this before and you have a vinyl cutter, essentially you create these little marks. You can see those squares that I have on both of them. And you use that to line up your images so that you're creating the decal with the various colors of vinyl. Hopefully that's making some sense. 
Now when I put it together, I did it backwards. I should have done the smaller piece first and then gone over with the bigger one because now you can see I'm like, ooh, I've got vinyl that's gonna end up on my mat if I'm not careful. So I was like, you know what? Let's uh, get something else under here. <laughs> and I had taped it down because otherwise, sometimes the stuff likes to jump right onto my transfer tape. So anyway, I got that tape off of there. I set down my transfer tape backing that I knew the vinyl wasn't going to stick to and went ahead and got the rest of that onto my transfer tape. So once I have that all set, you can see there, so now I've got both colors. I'm going to take off those little, I don't even remember what they're called, indicator mar markers, I'm going to call them. I'm going to remove those because I don't want them on my, did you see that jump? Did you see it jump? It came right up off the table. So fortunately, I was kind of lined up. It wasn't exactly the way I wanted it. But anyway, you remove those little indicators and then apply your design. So there we go with the one. And then I'm going to transfer the other one. So this is the Arteza transfer tape. I really am liking it. It's um, been doing a really good job for me. So I do recommend it. And I would not recommend things to you if I honestly um, wasn't thrilled with them. So but have yourself a merry little Christmas. And here we go with DIY number three. I do have another inspiration picture for you. This is from the City Lights collection. My sister sent this to me and thought it might be nice for one of my little miniatures. So I've got the remnant of a floral pick there that I was showing you. And this is a Dollar Tree string of LED lights. And we're gonna create this little tree. I will admit this was a little bit tedious, <laughs> so you definitely need to have a little bit of patience if you're going to attempt this. But essentially I came in with some floral tape, so you can see me with it there, and I am going to use the floral tape to attach this light to our floral pick stem. And I'm going to work it in such a way, hopefully you can see this here, where I'm allowing the bends in the light, the lights. So how do I explain this? With each of these little LED lights, you can see there are two parts of the wire coming into them, right? So I was using the lights, that natural bend, to create the tips of my tree branches. So can you see how that works? And so now I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna go over every single wire with the floral tape just to make it nice and uniform and make sure all of my wires are covered. Because right now each of those branches is two wires with a little light on the end. Hopefully that's making sense. But as I said, it's a little bit tedious, but this is going to be part of my winter village, my Christmas village that I've been talking about. So as you know, if you've been watching my videos, I am going to be doing at least one miniature in each of my videos leading up to the holidays so that we can construct a Christmas village or a winter village. I slowed it down here a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing as I go up and down each of these little branches. And I found it was easier if I pulled off a strip of the floral tape and just worked with you know, about 18 inches of it at a time. So I just used multiple pieces of the floral tape to, to get this done. And just wanted to make sure that everything, as I mentioned, was wrapped and uniform so it all looked nice and neat and like a little tree. And to be honest, I did not know if this was going to work out when I started this project. And I was really, really pleasantly surprised with the results. So I'm really proud of my little tree. I thought it turned out really super cute. But here I am just wrapping up the end of that little tree and you can see my little branches and now they are a little bit pliable and I can kind of bend them the way I want them. And I just thought that this was adorable. So now I'm taking, this is like a little mini pot from a um, little thing that I'd gotten at the Dollar Tree. Oh my goodness, succulent. <laughs> I had a succulent and there we are all lit up. So I just tucked my little tree into the succulent pot and I am good to go. So now it's time for a shout out time out. 
very nice Valerie. Valerie sent me these projects that she had done with other Dollar Tree calendars. I have not seen these calendars, but I think they are absolutely beautiful. I love the cardinals. Thank you so much for sharing, Valerie. And super cute Shastina. Shastina took on this project that I had done a couple of videos ago, and I love how they turned out. Look at those adorable faces, and I love their stems. Fantastic job. I would love to give you a shout out. So if you have interest, please email me at craftedbycory at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to highlight one of your projects too. So here we go with DIY number four. For this, I'm going to be using a black canvas that Arteza sent me. They are 11 by 14 inch canvases, and you can see that they're already black, as well as the Arteza acrylic paint markers. Now, I have never worked with a black canvas before, you guys. So I honestly, and you've heard me say, I'm not a painter. I, you know, I, I did not know if this was going to come out either, but... As I've said, you know what, I am going to just jump in and try things and I'll let you know if I fail and I'll show you what I would have done differently. But right here, I just grabbed one of my little paint containers and I am tracing a circle. I'd been sitting there trying to figure out what I was going to do. I had in my head an idea of what I wanted on this canvas. It was the execution that I really had to try and figure out. So this is the white paint marker. And I'm coming in, and now I'm coming in with silver. And I was trying to figure out, see, one of my challenges with painting is colors, right? And trying to figure out what colors I really need to be using to get the effect that I am looking for. I can picture it in my head. I just don't always know how to execute it on the canvas. So coming in with the silver now, and I'm kind of alternating them. and. I thought it was really cool. These really blended nicely together with the the paint. You know, it doesn't dry super quickly. It's not like a regular marker. This is paint and it gives you enough time to get in there and blend everything. And then I was able to kind of clean off the tips on my little scrap paper there. Now you can see me coming in with some blue here in a second. And again, I was not sure how this was gonna turn out, but it actually worked out really well. So I prepped my marker. This was the first time I was using this blue and I was just coming in really, really lightly. So if you can't tell yet, or if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm trying to create a moon in the corner of my canvas here. So now I have a piece of my little hand towel that I'm coming in with here and I'm smudging it and I'm trying to blend all of those lines together a little bit better. And I had a happy accident right there where it, I kind of like got outside of my lines. And I was like, oh, I can make this moon look misty. You know how when you've got a snowy night and the moon looks hazy? So that is the effect that I was going for here. So I was like, oh, that was, again, happy accident, right? It was not something I intended to do, but it happened. So I went with it and I really was pleased with the effect in the end. So hopefully you'll like it too. And I'm not going to edit out as much of this particular project as I do with regular things because, or my usual projects, because I really wanted to be able to show you exactly what I had done. So instead of cutting out a lot of the work, I actually sped it up a little bit more. There's my moon, Ooh, kind of off screen, sorry about that. But I did speed this up a little bit more than I normally do, just so that we can get through it relatively quickly, but you can see exactly what I did throughout. So I am here with the white paint marker again, and I am just trying to figure out how I am going to create my landscape here. So you'll see me alternating between the white and the silver and then also bringing in some more blue. Now this is a deeper blue. And my thought is I'm, uh, I've got land there and then a body of water kind of off in the distance a little bit further. So that's what I'm going with here. And I wanted there to be this impression that the moonlight was shining on the water. So I had that blue down on there. I'm coming in with my silver and 
again, the paint just started to kind of blend together. It was really a cool effect. And then coming back in again with another little piece of my hand towel and smooshing it together or <laughs> smudging it. I don't know what, that. there's probably a technical term for what I'm doing. I have no idea what it is, but I am just finding a way or making a way here. So again, doing what is pleasing to my eye, right? And I am just gonna keep going back and layering on more as necessary. So you'll see me going back to that again. But for right now, I'm creating a little tree. And so this is with the white paint marker again. And just coming in, I had created my um, trunk and then I'm just doing all the little branches off of the tree. And again, just doing it in a way that makes me happy, right? So coming in down on my landscape again with the white because I am thinking snow, I'm thinking winter scene and I'm trying to think about how I'm going to create the shadows here. And again, remember this is a marker, so that's why you're seeing like all these lines and I'm really thinking about how I'm going to blend this and where the shadows are going to be and how I'm going to create this cohesive look or picture in my head. So now I'm coming in with the silver again because I want there to be some depth and you know again oh and here i am with my hand towel again kind of um smearing everything a little bit um but again i i have no formal experience with painting i was not the best art student in school <laughs> you know so i'm just trying to figure this out as i'm going here if i my, my point is if i can do this you can do this right so you just have to try and just go with it and uh, and do the best you can, you know? And with paint, you can come back over it with something else if you don't like what you did and it can be something entirely new and different. So I'm just kind of going with it here and using my hand towel ever so often just to help me blend all of those lines together and get rid of that that harsh line that I've got with the the pen or the marker I should say every once in a while so just trying to figure out how to get the look that I'm going for back in with some more of the silver trying to create some shadows smudging and then I thought maybe I would do little footprints so I'm coming in with a silver here too and I started to try and figure out how I would do my little footprints and then I decided eh, now I, I want it to be pristine I'm gonna leave that alone so I tried to smudge that a little bit I ended up just having to come back over it with some more of the the white but in the meantime, I'm looking at my body of water again and thinking, how do I make it look like the uh, moonlight is glistening on it? So I just came back in with a little bit more of that. You can see I'm just smearing my little piece of hand towel. And I used a clean piece of hand towel each time, you guys, because I wanted to be careful not to get any of the paint on the black where I did not want it. So I just kept coming back in with my silver and my blue and my white and alternating it as necessary to again get it to where I wanted it and then I came in and I'm just doing little points of snow all over my canvas I did it not just on the black but over the image that I've painted as well because snow doesn't just stay you know on the in the sky area <laughs> right it's going to be hitting the ground so this is the final result for my painting and I, i'm really proud of myself i am excited about these black canvases and look at that moon i was really really happy with this so let me know what you think 
So, Arteza paint markers. I've been talking about these a lot. You guys, they sent me an extra set of 20 acrylic paint markers. So I am going to be giving these away to one of you. If you are interested in being in this drawing, leave me a comment and tell me what your favorite part of winter is. That's all you have to do. Tell me what your favorite part of winter is and I will enter you in a drawing that will happen within the week. So here we go with DIY number five. For this DIY, I'm gonna be using Arteza wood panels. I've got the Shine Bright and All You Do calendar, and make sure that you check my community page if you are in the calendar drawing because I am still trying to get those calendars out to the folks who've won. But I'm taking one of these wood panels, they are 10 by 10 inch panels, and they have a one and a half inch profile. So they are, when laid flat like that, how I have it, they are about an inch and a half tall. I guess it's maybe a little bit more than a, an inch and a half. So now I'm taking the Arteza regular acrylic paint. I've got it in red and it's a cardinal red and chocolate. And I'm blending this together and I am going to paint my wood panel. Now you could stain this. Um, I chose to paint it and it absolutely came out gorgeous. I'm going to show you the finished product in just a second here. I did speed right through this and once it was dry it looked like mahogany. Look at that you guys. You can see the wood tone through it because I only did one coat of paint on this and I just thought it was gorgeous but I did want to give it a little bit more of that farmhouse kind of feel so I roughed up the edges and distressed my corners with my sanding block. So you don't have to do that, but that's what I chose to do. So I'm just gonna clean up my wood panel, make sure I've got all the sawdust out of there, make sure it's nice and, and ready to go with my Dollar Tree image from that calendar that I had cut out and I'd cut down to size. I considered doing Mod Podge. I considered doing my adhesive spray. In the end, I figured, you know what? I'm gonna try this double-sided tape from the Dollar Tree because I've really been liking these. If you see these, they I found them in the Crafter Square area. Grab them, they are awesome. Really, really liking the double-sided tape. And it's so easy to apply with the little dispenser there. So I'm just gonna squeegee that down and then coming back in, cause you know I like finishing off all my edges. This is, I, again, I think this is a cotton cord. I think I got it from Walmart. I've had it in my stash for a while, so I'm not certain. But coming in with my hot glue and just going around the entire perimeter and just making sure that's nice and tight and secure all the way around. So you could leave it like that, but you know me, I'm coming back in with some berry picks. These are from the Dollar Tree. These are the ice berries that I just think are really pretty. I had done a wreath with these not too long ago. And I'm gonna come in with some hot glue to secure them in place. I'll add a few of those little berries that had fallen off and just kind of cover up the hot glue area with that, make it look a little bit prettier making sure everything is nice and secure. And then I'm also going to come back in with one of these little fluffy picks that looks like, oh, and I'd gotten it for $1.99. I wanted to show you from the Hobby Lobby. I'd gotten it a few years ago though. It's been in my stash for a while, but it's nice and soft and fluffy, but I think it looks like evergreen. And so I've been using this in a number of my projects recently, as you may know. So I'm cutting this one, uh, stock strand stock down into three pieces and I'm going to be tucking it in amongst my berries and just giving it a little bit more of an accent a little bit more texture so tucking it in and making sure that I am gluing it down so that it will stay secure of course I probably did this backwards <laughs> so trying to get it tucked in among the berries when I probably should have put the greenery down first because of the way I wanted it to look but I managed and then I did the same thing for the other side so pulled that pick apart and one of these went a really long way I, I mean I really got a lot out of these picks so it was good value for my money I think 
So again, you could leave it just like this. It's really pretty as is, but I just felt like I wanted something more. So I'm coming in with my Buffalo check ribbon again, and I'm gonna create a bow to put along the top. Now I have created a bow tutorial, you all. So that's gonna get posted soon within the next week or two. I just have to finalize the details on it. Um, and then I will have that posted for you as well. But. I'm just coming back and forth, making sure that my loops are the size that I wanted them. And then once I have it the way that I want it, I am going to come in and secure it all together in the middle there with some hot glue. So I'm just making sure it's the size that I want it for the wood panel that I'm working with. All right, Corey. Okay, here we go. Hot glue, getting that all secured at each of those layers. Just really be careful when you're doing this because the glue does go right through the ribbon. So you want to be careful not to burn yourself. So I flipped that upside down and let it sit there to cool the rest of the way. I had trimmed off a piece of ribbon that was the same length as the top of my box. I folded my ribbon in half to dovetail both ends. And now I am just going to position it up on top I'm putting some hot glue on the middle there. I just mentioned that that hot glue does go through, so this is gonna secure it to the top of my little panel as well, and then applying the bow that I had made as well. And that's it, there you have it. So here we are with our final reveal. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. And remember, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. All right, until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.